Danny Roth with Sci-Fi Wire, and I'm sitting here with Matthew Rosenberg, who is writing some books at Marvel, doing a little uh, Rocket Raccoon, doing a little Kingpin, done some stuff at Black Mass Studios. But uh, the reason we know each other is because uh, we worked at a comic book store together. <laughs> Hit that point where you're writing like Rocket Raccoon, who like everybody loves, and Kingpin, who's like one of the most seminal characters in the history of Marvel. Yeah, it's like next level. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's funny you mentioned Rocket Raccoon because I um, I love Rocket. I love Rocket from his origin stuff and the miniseries, and then the Annihilation and the early Guardians of the Galaxy stuff. That a lot of it became what the movies are in some ways. Um, I love him, but it didn't really dawn on me. Like in my head, who's who's a big deal is based on their comic status yeah. and like. You know, there's been great Rock Raccoons, and Scotty Young did had a great run that was well loved, and um, people after him too. But in my head, like Rocket is like so, was sort of a lower tier character. And at San Diego Comic Con, uh, I was walking through the show floor, and there were two little kids, probably like 11 or 12, who were um, they made comics for their school, and they were like, "Hey, do you want to see our comics?" And they had a little table, and and it was like they had a comics making class, which I think is so awesome. And so I stopped and I talked to them and you know I, I was like, oh, these are great. And they were really great and they were really fun. And I bought them and uh, I was like, these are so much better than, than the comics I made when I was your age, like miles and miles better. And their teacher was there and she said, oh, do you still make comics? I said, yeah, I, I'm a writer. And she said, who do you write for? And I said, Marvel. And the kid's eyes lit up and I, I got that. And then uh, this little, the little girl, she said, you know, what, what, books do you write? And she said, what, what do you write? And I said, I write Rocket Raccoon. And she burst into tears and just hugged me. And I was like, oh, this is, yeah. this is bigger than I thought it was. Like, this is a major thing. Um, which is, uh, yeah, it's good that I didn't think about that when I took the job because that do would you, freak me I out. mean, are you able to, to, to push past or like, does it, in that, once you have that moment, does it change the way you write Rocket? I mean, I had to fight against it because uh, I think little kids yeah. want to read a rocket, and my rocket is not necessarily for little, little kids. No. There's a lot of uh, people getting their heads cut off and stuff, a lot of cursing and drinking. and he's yeah. a, But he's a brutal guy. I mean, he, yeah, that's, that's, so that's sort of in the DNA of the character. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think you know, it's heavy. I, I grew up, like I said before, I, I learned to read stealing my older brother's X-Men comics, like literally sounding them out. Um, I've read Marvel books my entire life. Like, I'm a, as big a Marvel fan as, as you're going to find. And uh, it was sort of always my goal to just write something for them. And they've been amazingly awesome to me. <laughs> and, like, uh, just really opened the door. And everyone who works there is great. And so it is this sort of, like, dream come true experience. But it is, like, I go in the office for a meeting and I have to constantly remind myself to be somewhat professional. I'm not the most professional dude out there, but like I have to be like, oh, don't just like stop and like study the posters and like dig through people's desks looking at stuff. Like just be, be cool and act like you belong, um, which is really hard for me. But it, I mean, it's amazing. I'm, I like in particular, uh, especially with these two books so far, um, Rocket and Kingpin, is that. They are a little separated from some of the larger goings on, at least at this point. And what's great yeah. is that you get to focus on the place that they're in, which is New York City. Yeah. Which, other than like what this ostensibly will look like, just a giant white space when people watch this video, like we're in the afterlife. We are, in fact, actually in Hell's Kitchen right now. Yes. Yeah. And so a lot of uh, what you write about is the place that we live. Oh, yeah. I mean, I grew up here. I was born here, lived here my whole life. Um, I love New York. And that was sort of. You know, when they offered me Rocket, I was like, I want to do Rocket in New York. And, like, they were like, well, what's that like? And I was like, well, you know, people would be weirded out by him. But they're also New Yorkers, and they yeah. sort of wouldn't really have a problem with it. And so I wanted, like, a lot of that experience of, like, you know, Rocket takes the subway. Yeah. And people what just, time is it? Yeah. That was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. It was um, so good. The, uh, the, you know, but I wanted, like, Rocket on the subway and, like, People don't not get on the subway car with the giant raccoon with a gun. They just get in the other door of the subway car. Yeah. Like, they move down. Like, he takes a Staten Island ferry, and uh, people don't run off screaming. But when he passes out, they take pictures with him. And, like, that's sort of the New York that I love is, like, we kind of roll with anything. And, and 
And Rocket's sort of looking to be celebrated in the city. And then inverted, I have the Kingpin, who is like this other side of New York. He's, you know, high society. And I really wanted to show that, that he's, you know, got a got an apartment in Midtown in a in a high rise, but he's, you know, staying in Westchester on the weekends and in some sort of mansion. And um he's a part of New York that, you know, I, I grew up and I, I went to school and I went to school with some uh, in the children of some of the insanely wealthy and you know I would get glimpses of that life and and sort of try and understand a little better and it's fun to to be able to write both of those I think New York is like so integral to so much of what Marvel does and I feel like if I'm not taking advantage of it in every book as a native New Yorker uh, I'm really missing it like I'm really not doing my job because like I grew up and would be excited when I recognized somewhere Spider-Man was going or, or recognize like, you know, when the X-Men would come down to the city and you'd see it, uh, you'd see them do something specific like in Central Park. Um, so I wanted all that. So like, you know, I, I try and get, uh, in the Rocket book he goes to, uh, I think we don't end up saying it. I think actually one of the title cards are removed, but uh, I was like, he's going to all five boroughs. Like mm -hmm. at some point, he will be in all five boroughs. Yeah. And so he does. They they put him. We put him everywhere. Um, and that was just really important to me because I want people in the Bronx and people in Queens and Brooklyn and Manhattan and, and Staten Island to be like, oh, he came. Like, oh, he rode the ferry and then he ended up here and stuff. So, yeah. I mean, I I I'm a New Yorker till the day I die. So it, it's nice that to be able to throw some love to the city.